Hello my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. This week I am going to paint another fisherman uh, sitting on the edge of a boat with some beautiful reflections. I did paint one very, very similar a couple of weeks ago um, from a different angle, but I thought it would be lovely just to have a set of these paintings because I think there's a lot to learn from painting something like this because you have reflections, water, trees, your foliage, um, a figure of a man, that kind of thing. So you have a lot of different stuff to learn from and you can apply that to you know, most of your paintings. So I thought it would be nice. It's a really lovely little scene. It's very peaceful. So I'm going to give it a go. I hope you don't mind and I hope you enjoy it. It's on a 16 by 12 canvas. I primed this once, just one quick coat of primer. Undercoat, water-based primer, let it dry and that's it. That's all we need. So I think this is going to be interesting and I think it's going to be fun. And I think when we get to the reflections, it's just going to really come to life. And you'll be amazed how easy it is to create such realistic kind of reflections on something like this. Uh, it's actually very, very easy. It's just follow the steps, that's all, okay? Just take your time and follow me along. So let's, uh, let's have a bit of fun. Let's try it. Thank you so much for all the wonderful comments. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you so, so much to my patrons for supporting me on Patreon. Um, some fantastic stuff we have going on there as well. So check it out if you're interested. Um, yes, let's go. Let's have a bit of fun with this. Don't go anywhere. Okay, my friends, let's go. There's the reference photograph. Um, I think that's beautiful. It may look very complicated now. There's a lot going on in this, but we can do this in part two and take our time. Um, I just want to concentrate on getting all these background trees done. So, on a dry canvas, I'm going to take my large brush, dip into some thinners, and let's make a nice colour now. Let me see. What can we go for? Up around the back up here. Hmm... I think I'll go for a very soft green, okay? I'm going to take some phthalo blue, Naples yellow, and some white. And I will also take a little touch of magenta, because remember, a little magenta in this will help push those colours way, way off. I think they will anyway. Let's try this. I'm going up at an angle. Uh, this now was quite thin, as you can see. I don't have a lot of paint. I'm using tiny, tiny amounts of paint, look. Because, really, honestly, you only need a small amount. It's for very distant trees. So a small amount is absolutely fine. You don't have to go crazy with loads and loads of big chunk, chunks of paint on your, on your canvas, okay, or your palette. Um, as it starts now, I'm just going to start thickening it with a little more cadmium yellow, some phthalo blue, and a little white so then it's coming a little closer and perhaps a touch of magenta again so as it comes down and sort of closer you can see it just gets kind of slightly darker doesn't it now that may be a little bit on the green side for me so I'm gonna go make a little bit of mauve for myself a little bit of phthalo blue with some white and some magenta and I'm mixing this on the same colour then, you see? Now oh, that's exactly what I want. I'm going to go up by maybe slightly just above halfway with this. I'm just going to draw an imaginary line right across there like that. And a little more blue, a little more magenta, again a little more white. So we're going for very kind of soft blues now with this just around here, okay? Soften it into that greeny colour and just mix it all up. If you want, you can leave this out. And just, or, or you can even put a distant colour right across there if you like. You don't have to um, put two different layers of trees. You can just leave one. It's up to yourself. Um, now, I can see we have some rich, very nice kind of rich dark purples and warm purples going on up there. I'm going to take some phthalo blue, lots of magenta, and even a touch of cadmium red. Okay, I'm making like a plum, a plum kind of a shade. And I'm going to pop that plum, a little bit more red. You don't have to do this now. You can just make this very simple and very basic if you like, all right? I'm going to pop that little bit of plum just kind of in here and there. And I'm softening all of this now just in little circles with my brush. This really now is just for a little bit of an effect in the background, all right? It's just to show different types of kind of colours of trees that are going on back there. So I'm just giving my brush a quick clean and 
I think I'll switch brushes, yes? Wouldn't that be a good idea? I think it would. I'm going to go for the slightly smaller brush, medium kind of a flat brush. Dampen that now and give it a good dry. I'm going to start putting some cyana kind of yellows in here. So burnt cyana, cadmium yellow. And then I'm going to take a touch of phthalo blue, only just to make this slightly kind of a greeny shade. So a mucky kind of a green shade, okay? Let's try some of this. Now, what I want to do with this colour is put some here, because we have some nice light catching those trees here, don't we? If you look on the reference photograph. So, again, I'm complementing the painting just kind of slightly. So I want to get these colours in now. And then later I can put some nice lights and yellows and greens over some of these. So it's really just to help the composition later on in the painting. That's kind of all I'm doing, really. A little bit of cyanide there now again, like that, you see. I go up here and I'm just literally dabbing kind of at a curvature with my brush, you see. I really just want to get some of that colour kind of mixed in. That's all I want to do. And I'm not really going for a perfect finish with this. It's just an impression. As you know, with my paintings, I like to kind of make an impression, especially with trees. I don't like um, these types of tutorials which go into lots and lots and lots of details with trees, you know, spending two hours painting uh, some foliage. I'm not that type of artist. I, I really am not. I like to just keep it simple and make a nice little impression. That's just the type of painting I like to do. Now I'm just making a little dark green here. I'm going to pop a little dark green in here and there. So you see, I still have that background kind of mauve colour keeping all of this lovely and cool. I'm just going up there and I'm going to stop. Now, clean that brush very quickly. Just give it a rub on some tissue. Let's get some cadmium yellow and some Naples yellow. And we could even take a touch of a touch of phthalo, a very slightly touched. Look, we go from here. Take a touch of phthalo blue off of that. This is lots of colour now, lots of thick paint on my brush. And I'm just simply going to go and dab like this. So simply just creating little bunches of trees off in the distance. So I'm just creating a kind of a hillside of trees way, way off here up in the distance. And this is going to be so far away, it'll be very difficult to make out um, separate kind of trees and things like that. Let's grab some Naples yellow. As it comes over here, I'm going to lighten them all with Naples yellow, look. So I'm just using the corner of my brush and dabbing it in little circles, you see? And that just gives a nice little impression of separate little trees up in the distance. And when this is all done, then I might just kind of dab over all of this with um, even the big brush. Now I'm going to take some Naples yellow and just with some Naples yellow, I'm going to just lighten all of this over here. So I want, it's almost like a glow coming from the left hand side of those distance trees, like a misty kind of a glow. I'm just going to soften it across. Okay, and you could even get some white in with that yellowy colour as well. And brighten it over here even further. Dab, 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 dab. Around here and there. Just creating that light kind of coming across. There we go. So I'm going to stop there and then I'm just simply going to get, um, hmm, let me see. I could get my soft blender brush and I could dab as well. Very, very soft brush look and just kind of dab this all together, almost just making a very fuzzy type of a, type of a background, okay? So there's no definition in all of this. It's just a very fuzzy background, but it's just little hints of trees, an impression. I'm gonna go with this and do this next. And I'm gonna just go right in with a very, very dark color. 
I'm going to take some phthalo blue and some cadmium yellow. A little touch of thinners to thin that out nicely. And some magenta. So it's a very sort of, it's almost like an emerald green. If you've ever used like an emerald green out of a tube, it's a very dark kind of a bluey green. But the magenta is really warming it up nicely. So I always like to start with a kind of a darker colour for the base. And then I work my way in some lights. So we have this lovely kind of a rich bluey green here now. I know this looks a bit rich. Um, you can tone it down using some burnt sienna if you like. Okay, burnt sienna, that works as well. Just tones it down a little bit. Now what I'm doing with the brush as it comes over here, I'm putting the brush on edge, okay, and just swinging it up, up and down, up and down, look. I'm bringing it down to a point. Okay, you got that? Just a nice little way of doing these little trees like that, you see. Just use the corner of your brush, the very edge, and just flick it up into the paint. Now you can add colour to this. Let's try some burnt sienna. Add a little burnt sienna to that. Up and down, up and down. And this is just creating the initial sort of sketch of the trees, if you know what I mean. Now you can do this the whole way along if you like as well, look, because that's giving you direction of the trees and it's almost, I suppose, painting individual trees as well. You can kind of see the individual trees coming in. I'm going to take some burnt, or sorry, some cadmium red, some magenta, and I want to add a little warmth into this. And you can also see I'm doing this very sort of dry, okay? There's not a lot of paint on this. I'm simply covering the white of the canvas with this kind of scraping technique, up and down, up and down. So we have a nice kind of a background in there now, don't we? The next thing I think I will do is just give this a quick wipe and... I could even try using this brush for some lights. So if we decided we want to put some bright colours up there, we could try some burnt sienna with some cadmium yellow. And just with that side of the brush, okay, we could just go along and tap some light colours here and there. Like so. Okay, and really again, this is just sort of an impression. I like to create impressions. I'm taking some magenta with some Naples yellow, and that's a lovely warm kind of a color as well. Put some of that out there. We can actually suggest the light catching some of these coming down like this, you see. So the light is sort of co coming down and catching this at an angle as well, as it disappears down into the dark. Get some Naples yellow as well. You can, if you like, use a fan brush for this now as well. Um, it's entirely up to yourself. Now, I'm going to... Hmm, I'm going to get some green. So, a little bit of cadmium yellow... There's already a bit of blue in this, so I have a relatively nice green here. Maybe make this slightly cooler because it's in shadow. Now I'm going to use my flat brush like this and just go at a slight angle like this, okay? And that will give you some nice angle to your trees. Okay, I hope, now you probably can't see much of this really. Um, it probably looks a little bit dark to you. I lighten it slightly so you can see it. I don't know if you can see that now, I'll make those out. They're very, very subtle lights. 
I'm just dabbing up and down, up and down with my brush at an angle this way, you see? And it almost gives you those kind of foreign trees as they kind of flick out, you know? It almost gives you that kind of a feeling. Okay, how's that? I am then going to go back to my other brush. And what I'm going to do now is create, you see the light hitting some of those? I'm going to create that light. Let's go. Let's take some burnt cyanide and lots of cadmium yellow. Maybe a touch of cadmium red even to make this a nice orangey light. And we have a nice one here. So it's coming at an angle. So I'm going to start the angle like this. Okay. Then I'm going to fill in this area like so now that's still very dark I know you can't see much of that I'm going to lighten this with some white and this should make a big big difference magenta born cyanide and let's take a touch of cadmium yellow as well let's try this And another one perhaps kind of coming into the picture over here. So the trick is really remember that angle, okay? So if you want to get a ruler and put your ruler like this and paint at that angle, you can. That's absolutely fine. And perhaps another little one around here as well. So we now have a little kind of direction of sunlight coming in. And what I'm going to do is continue that colour, that kind of shade down underneath with a slightly darker shade then, you see? Now, this will all make sense now very soon, I promise. I'm just going to go like this and sort of carry on the tree ever so slightly down. And the same with this one. Maybe a hint of that one as well. So you can see, you see that there, just that little light popping through. And what I will do then, just to really set these off, and this is what it's all about for me, I'll take some cadmium yellow and a little white. And I'm going to really set the sunlight hitting these trees. Perhaps a little touch of it just here as well. And that's not bad. I can also do the same over here. So I can just go here with some bright yellow, setting off these tips of those trees just over there. Now, a palette knife is perfectly acceptable for this as well, if you rather use a palette knife. Okay, that's fine. I'm not going to go at this too much. I don't think we need to, to be quite honest. If you keep going at it, there's a real chance you can spoil what you have and go too far. I think that's enough. I really do. My next job to, with this is to create a lovely mist along here. I'm going to get a very bright mist. And I need a different brush now for this. Uh, okay, let me see. I could use a fan brush, actually. Now, I have a brand new fan brush here. I'd like to keep that clean for kind of finer work, if possible. So something a little bigger. Let me see. No, let me see. I'll just go with this. I'm just going to give it a quick clean. I want to take all the greeny colour out of this brush, just rubbing it on my tissue here next to me. And that's it. I'm going to take some phthalo blue and lots of white. Now, let me just try this. Okay, that's not bad. I might take a touch of magenta, actually, because I can see quite an amount of pink in that mist. First of all, let's just go across the base of the trees like this. Okay. 
I'm going to take a touch more magenta and add a nice pink in over here. I'm simply dabbing like this, look. So this is disappearing into the trees at the, at the back over here. And then I'm going to just sort of dab it across, right across these, the base of these trees as well. Like so. Now, I'm not going to go too far with this because let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm then going to take my fan brush, clean fan brush, and I'm just going to sort of flick it upwards here and there. You see the way it sort of flicks up here and there into the trees. Just go around in little circles. And just where they meet, look, I'm just going around the little circles and flicking it up. You see that? Now, it's not as strong as this on the photograph, obviously. Um, but I kind of like a nice strong mist in my paintings. I'm just going to go up a little tiny little bit here and there with some of them. Like this. Okay, you don't have to go crazy now with this. But just to show that there's mist kind of rising from the water, that's what I'm trying to kind of achieve, so to speak. A little bit of mist just kind of rising up and then softening it down. And I'm really just kind of trying my hand to see what happens. Um, I'll be very honest, I'm just trying and seeing what happens. So I'm just going to get my soft brush and just kind of soften these down towards the bottom. Look, I'm softening the trees down into the mist and vice versa. Just making it lovely and soft. But that will do for now. That's absolutely fine. We can keep kind of tipping away with this as we go. Okay. Um, you know, we're not stuck with this. We can add little bits here and little bits there. Not to worry. So look, we're going well. We had the top half of the painting finished. You can soften those in. I, I might even soften those in a little bit more, actually, come to think of it. I think I will. You know, look, we're not stuck with something. And that's the beauty of oils. If you do something and you don't like it, you're not stuck with that. You can just soften them all in. Look, just grab the brush and soften them right back in. Up into the green. Little swirls. That's my trick. Little swirls. That creates this lovely sort of misty effect. Now there, that's a little bit better, isn't it? So I'm just going to start the water, start putting in the water in, and then I'm going to maybe call that part one finished. I don't want to overload you with too much at once, if you understand what I mean, and I hope you do understand. I don't want to give you too much at once, and, and you know, I want you to kind of take your time with all of this. I'm going for a nice dark green look. And bringing it across like that and now softening it up into the mist look as it comes down there's a little hint of a darker blue with some magenta possibly in there as well um, a lot of people get very confused when painting something like this because they're trying to copy colours and they're trying to copy exactly the exact shades and all of that. What I say to you is look at the colour of a particular area. Look at that colour. Try to figure out what colour you think that may be. So a dark blacky green, for example. OK, I make a dark blacky green and I just put in a dark blacky green. That's how I kind of start all of these um, reflections and stuff like that. Now, as it comes across here, I'm going to add some phthalo blue and white into the mix with a little magenta. The magenta is so important in this painting because it adds a warmth. If I don't use magenta in this, everything's going to look very sort of cold. But I want to create a nice warmth in this painting, and magenta is the perfect colour for that. It just it's so soft, it's so inviting when you look at a colour like magenta going through a painting. It really is, it's lovely. 
thought, I mean, that's not bad, is it, so far? I have to say, it. I wasn't expecting it to turn out like this. I was, you know, a little bit apprehensive at the start, let's say. But I think that's pretty nice. I'm quite liking this. And that light up in the trees is very eye-catching as well. So, yeah, I'm quite happy. Now, there's one thing I want to do. I want to create a little area of light just on that side over there as well. And I'm just going to take some Naples yellow, white, and cadmium yellow. And I think, I think it would help if I just popped a little light in here and there. Uh, just over on that side. Just to add one or two, just to show the direction of the light coming across. I think that's, I think that's helpful. So, yes, my friends, we are looking quite good on this so far. I'm going to leave this area for part two because we can take our time. I want this all to dry before I start painting the man sitting on the boat. So I think I'd, it's best to just leave all of this until the last, until part two. But I'm just going to take a little pink again and just put a little pink in here and there. And just break up that line ever so slightly with a little mist. So you can see what I'm doing now just with the fan brush, I'm just sort of allowing it to come down and sort of softening it out left and right, you see? And perhaps take a little white as well and pop a little white over in the distance just to really make it misty, if you like. But it's up to you. If you're nervous about doing mist like this, you could just leave it completely as it is and it's absolutely fine. And just soften it with your little soft makeup brush. Don't tell your partner that you took the makeup brush, by the way. And if they do find out, just blame me. It was my fault. Stephen told you to take them. There we are. I'm quite happy with that, my friends. I'm going to call that part one finished. So, I'll turn the camera. And I will bid you a very good day. Thank you so, so much for watching. Um, I'm quite happy. This is coming on quite nice, isn't it? This could turn out quite nice in the end, hopefully. So I will be right back with part two. Um, don't go anywhere. Happy painting. Grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and uh, relax for a while. Look at what you've done, and we'll concentrate on part two. All right? I'll be right back.